In my experience, sci-fi movies have mostly portrayed AI as monotone, emotionless things, like the Terminator. Even in Star Trek's timeline, the best humanity could muster all the way in 2364 was Data, a metallic-skinned android that struggled to understand even basic human emotions. These movies and ideas were seeds that fertilized my mind growing up. They implanted within my subconscious a timeline of how humanity's technological progress would unfold. And I just accepted it without critical thought. I believe that over the next hundred years, man would invent space travel, and then we'd start to colonize planets, maybe meet some humanoid aliens, build some flying cars, genetically engineer ourselves to be healthier, and then maybe we'd start to build human-level AI by 2200 or something. But it hasn't gone that way, has it? Instead of focusing on medicine, flying cars, and space travel, almost all technological advancement is focused on computers, to the point that we now all carry a supercomputer in our pocket more powerful and capable than anything in Star Trek. And oh, we also have this little thing called the Internet, which, interestingly enough, is absent almost entirely from science fiction before its invention. And you know why the Internet was absent from science fiction? Because it would have been considered absurd, too far-fetched. The idea that a fifth grader could pull out a little tablet and say, OK, Google, bring up a video of the history of China, and it would? wirelessly, a little device with instant access to almost all human knowledge? Too far-fetched. But hey, here we are. And I realized that day that scientists all over the world were now shrugging their shoulders and predicting that technology would be beyond anything we could understand in only 30 or so years, my own lifetime. Wow. But my sense of wonder only lasted about five seconds, and then my selfishness kicked in. After all, it was obvious that the singularity would be coming at the end of my lifetime, right? I mean, after all, I was 25, the year was 2007, the singularity was predicted for somewhere between 2030 and 2050. There was going to be immortality, virtual reality universes, perfect health, and free energy for all. If AI didn't kill us or whatever. It sounded great. And I might miss it, I thought glumly. After all, the odds were decent that I might die of old age and miss all this amazing stuff by just a few years. I could see it in my mind's eye, clearly. I was going to finish my life out working some soul-sucking job, and then just as every cool thing ever imagined from science fiction got invented, I would have a heart attack and die in an alley somewhere as I listened to the faraway sounds of a bunch of spoiled kids rejoicing. Not cool. I shook my head sadly and thought, but hey, you know, with all that magical technology, maybe they could resurrect me. Bring me back to life or something. Technological resurrection. The thought was kind of an offhand joke, half-formed. And then I thought, heck, why not? I had stumbled onto a new idea. A fourth option. And I wasn't thinking about someone thawing out my cryogenically frozen head or Frankensteining my fresh corpse back together. No, I was thinking about the idea that one day, through some quantum trickery, a few hundred years from now, a technologically advanced civilization of men and artificial superintelligence would be able to resurrect anyone from history, even little me. The thought was interesting. Still safely in the realm of science fiction in my mind, I shrugged, closed the article, and got some sleep. I had work in the morning. But little did I know that I wasn't the first person to have this thought, and that over the next few years, new advances in science and theories on space, time, and quantum physics would come out that would make this idea far more interesting than I could have ever dreamed. Alright, in the next video I'll begin chapter two, the fourth option.